Most budgets suck and they make you want to avoid the idea of budgeting altogether, but it doesn't have to, which is why today I'm going to go over how you can create a real budget to build real wealth and not have to worry about money anymore. See, most people hate the idea of budgeting because when you go to Chipotle and the server asks you, do you want to buy some extra guac? And you think, hmm, should I pay the $1.50? I mean, $2.65 for the extra guac. Now you have to create this complex calculation that is this $2.65 going to fit within my food budget? And then if I didn't pay the $2.65 today, how much would that be worth if I compounded that in the S&P 500 over the next 10 years? And so you have to go through all of this complex questioning and thought in order to make a basic purchase. Now, I don't recommend what I do to anybody else, but I probably have the simplest budget known to mankind because my budget is don't spend money that isn't in my bank account. But it's probably not the way that you think. Let me show you. The way it works for me is systems and automations. What that means is I make money from my business and my investments. And when I make this money, it hits this checkings account right here. I'm gonna call it C to keep it simple. But then I have systems and automations in place where money is automatically pulled out of this money, which is going to be, we'll call it I invested. And I also have money that's automatically pulled out that's going to be saved. Now it does get a little bit more complex because I have multiple different investments here and I also have different savings goals here, different savings accounts here. Some of this investment money is put into a bank account that's holding money that's going to be invested in the stock market. Some of this investment money is sitting in a bank account that's going to be invested in the real estate market. Some of this investment money is sitting in an account that's going to be invested in startups. Some of the savings money is there to protect me against an emergency. Some of the savings money is there to make a bigger purchase. Now you're gonna say, well, just breathe. I don't have all this money coming in. I don't have money to put into all these different you don't have to do all that. But listen, it's about separating and automating because now I have money that I know is going to be invested. I have money that I know is going to be saved. I just put it in a different place. Some people call it a folder system. Some people call it an envelope system. I use bank accounts. I have a different bank account for certain types of money, right? This money is going to be used for a specific thing. That way, this money that's left over, this is my spending money. Now, my budget is essentially don't spend money that's not in here because the money that's not in here has a purpose, it has a goal. It's gonna be invested, it's gonna be put into the business, it's gonna be used for my emergency protection, it's gonna be used to purchase a home, it's gonna be used to buy these types of things where I just use a different bank account, that way that money I know is not gonna be spent. This is the money that I can spend. Now, the reason why this can become very difficult is because, well, it requires you not to spend all the money that you make. Because the reality is your budget is there, that way you don't spend all of your money. Because if you spend all your money in your homes, your cars, your shoes, and your vacations, now you have no more money to invest, you have no more money to save, well, now that's where you need a budget to tell you, hey, you got to put some money into your investments. Hey, you need to put some money into your savings. And I was doing this before you knew about Minority Mindset, before you knew about Briefs Media. This was something that was important to me because I realized that this is where your wealth is built. Your wealth is built through your investments. Your wealth is not built through how much money you make. Your wealth is not built through your savings. Your wealth is not built through all the cool things that you purchase, although that's what I thought initially. Your wealth is built through your assets and your investments, and in order for you to own more investments, you gotta take the money that you're earning, not spend it, and buy more of these investments. Because if you look at the wealthiest people in the world, what do they do? They own stocks, they own real estate, they own businesses. This is what wealthy people do. So if you want to become wealthy, you got to kind of follow what the wealthy people do. You want to own stocks, and you want to own real estate, rental properties, and you want to own businesses. But in order to do that, it takes money. And guess what? If you have a job, if you have a business, well, you have money coming in. Now, if you spend all that money on Gucci, on the extra guac, on the BMWs, on the vacations to Cancun, you look rich because all your money's coming out of here and you can show it off on Instagram and you have all the nice stuff, but you have none of this, which is actually going to make you wealthy. And the interesting thing about this is when you buy these, you can't show it off. When I go out and I invest in stocks, well, Nobody really knows or cares because, well, it's just sitting there in my stock market portfolio, but I see it because when I get those dividends, I get the notification saying I got paid. When I buy a rental property, I don't get to show anything off, but I see it when I get the rental payments every single month. Versus if I went out and I bought myself a brand new Gucci belt, then I could tuck in my shirt and show off my belt all day and night long here on YouTube. And you're going to think, wow, this guy just beneath is so cool. He has a nice Gucci belt. He must be so rich. When in reality, 
those things make you look rich, but they really make somebody else rich. Now, I'm not saying don't have nice things, don't buy nice things, don't buy luxury things, don't buy expensive things. I want you to have all the nice and expensive and luxury things. All I want is for you to make yourself rich first, because unfortunately, our system is designed for you to make everybody else rich, and then you have no money left over for yourself. I mean, this is what really a budget is all about. Stop making everybody else rich before you make yourself rich, because when you go and spend a dollar, that dollar goes to somebody else. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because you want to have nice things. You want to have value. You have to eat. You need clothes on your back. You need a car to get to and from work. But when you spend all of your money and then some with credit because your budget doesn't exist, well, now you are making everybody else rich at your expense. And this is where now you can get more granular. I mean, you can go into this and say, well, how much money should I spend on my housing? How much money should I spend on my cars? How much money should I spend on my vacations? And for me, the reality is, I know that as long as I'm spending within my means, I'm okay. And I'm fortunate because I get it. I am very fortunate that I make a good income, that it's comfortable for me, that I know that if I want to go on a vacation, I can still do that. Well, that would fit right here. But the reality is you need a place to start and you need to know, well, if I'm getting started now, trying to be more financially educated, how do I start setting something up where I'm always saving some money, investing some money, and having some money to spend? And a very simple way to do this is to follow something like a 75 15, 10 plan. If you watched any of my educational videos, I've talked about this quite a few times. And what this says now is for every dollar that you earn, 75 cents is the maximum that you can spend. 15 cents is the minimum that you invest. 10 cents is the minimum that you save. This way now, every time you make a dollar, that dollar has a job. 75 cents is the maximum you can spend on your housing, on your cars, on your vacations, on your food, on your clothes, on your anything that you want to buy. 15 cents is what you're going to put into your investments as a minimum. Now we can get into the nitty gritty as to where you're going to invest. Are you going to buy index funds? Are you going to buy rental properties? Are you going to go out and invest in startups? But the reality is this money is what is going to be invested. You can also use this money to help pay down your debts faster. You can also use this money to help invest in your own business idea. You could also use this money to invest in your own knowledge. That way you can increase your career, that way you can increase your income. But the whole idea here is you're going to invest this money to help grow your wealth. This is the money you're going to use to protect your wealth. Because the reality is you got to have some protection because if something were to go wrong tomorrow, if you lost your job, if your kid got sick, if your wife got sick, if your husband got sick, if something happened and you needed some money, you got to have a fallback plan because the reality is most Americans unfortunately have no savings. And what you don't want to do is have no savings and have no extra money left over. Now you got to go into credit card debt to protect your family or now you got to sell off your investments to pay off this medical bill, to pay off your bills because you had no extra savings because these investments, well, the goal is to sit there and let them compound and grow. And if you just sell them every time an emergency happens, you never give your money any time to compound and grow. And this is where your investments are not your emergency money. This is your emergency money, which is why you want to plan for that, which is why you want to budget for that. And this is where you don't have to get too crazy and say, oh my God, I can only designate $38.48 a month on going out to movies. It doesn't have to be like that. As long as you can understand your spending money is not all of your money. And then you have some money for investments, you have some money for your savings. It can be a whole lot simpler and a whole lot freer. But I also want you to understand that if you really want to take your finances to the next level, you have to track your money. Because that tracking of your money is going to help you visualize the way that you spend your money. And it's also going to help you find ways to optimize how you're using your money. Let me show you. You will see every sort of sophisticated business owner do this because they want to track and optimize their money because that's what's going to help them build the most wealth for their business. And this is something that I want you to implement for your personal finances as well. You're going to create a profit and loss statement for your personal finances. And a profit and loss statement is a simple statement that shows your income minus your expenses. Now, in order for this to work, you have to get serious about actually writing every single piece of money going in and out of your bank account. That means you got to pull out your bank statement, your credit card statements, your debit card statements, and now take a look at where the money is going and how it's flowing. That means number one, 
How did the money hit your bank account? Did it come from your job? Did it come from your business? Did it come from your side hustle? Did it come from your other freelancing gigs? Write down where all of your money came from in the last month. Then below that, write down all of your expenses. And yes, you need to do every single one. I don't care if it was 14 cents included here because you want to know where your money is going. But on all of your expenses and after you have all of your expenses, write down how much money did you invest? How much money did you save? How much money did you give to charity? You need to know where your money is going. And now you want to start tracking this month after month after month. This made a huge change in my business. I run Briefs Media. When we started doing this years ago, it was a very big insight now to see how money is flowing. Because unless you start tracking it, you can't see how much money you're spending on advertising, how much money you're spending on rent, how much money you're spending on your, your meals and entertainment. Well, until you can visualize it, you can't track it and optimize it. And this is where I want you to spend an hour a month doing this with the finances. If you're married, get your spouse involved with this too, because this is going to help you understand that if you want to have a systemized budget, you got to make sure that this number is less than this number. Because if that's not the case, well, you already have a broken budget. Then the next thing you want to do is when you spend money here on your expenses, that your expenses are less than this when you take a look at buying things with cash. Meaning, if the numbers here are less than this because you're buying everything with buy now, pay later, you're buying everything with 0% APR financing, that is a failed budget. That means you got to spend your money here on your expenses, buy them with cash, and let these expenses be less than your income. Once you do that, you're winning in your budget. Then the next thing you want to do is make sure that you're spending less money here than here, but then you also have money for your savings. You also have money for your investments. You also have money to give. Now you have a winning budget because you're making money, you're spending less than what you make, you're buying things with cash, you're not financing your purchases, the only exception to this is your home, and yes, you should not be financing your car either, and then you have money to save, you have money to invest, and you have money to give, now you have a winning budget. Now you have the recipe to build wealth because the reality is wealth is built through your investments. It's not built through your savings. It's not built through buying a whole bunch of fancy and expensive things. If you want to become wealthy, you have to invest your money. But the only way for you to invest your money is if you don't spend all of your money. And that requires you to have a system to make sure you're not spending all the money that you bring in. And that's what your budget is. A simple and basic way to understand if a company that you're thinking about investing in is overvalued or undervalued is by comparing these numbers from one company to another within the same industry. So what I want to do for the purposes of this video is I'm going to compare McDonald's, I'm going to compare Chipotle, and I'm going to compare Yum! Brands. So let's start with McDonald's.